Hello friends and welcome to Escaping the Mouse with your host, me, Breck Rowell. Alright, it's a new weekend for me. This is my short weekend and so I got three days on this and what we're going to do is we're going to continue working on hanging the posters in the hall. So let's get going on that. Now I wanted to see if I could finally pull out the lawnmower and get that thing working today uh, just because this backyard is getting a little bit out of hand. And unfortunately, this thing has always been kind of tough to start, even under the best conditions. Uh, but it's been sitting in a storage locker now for a year. And I've tried multiple times to get it going. I've been unable to do so. So I may end up having to take it in and give it a tune-up and uh, have somebody repair it and see if there's uh, anything wrong with it. Um, otherwise, I may just end up having to replace it. But... You know, that happens sometimes. Even, like I said, under the best conditions when I was in California, it had a horrible time starting when it was cold. So what I would end up doing is before I wanted to mow the lawn, I'd take it out in the yard and let it sit in the sun for a while just because the sun would warm it up. Well, that hasn't worked. I've tried uh, multiple times and no, so, no good here. Um, I mentioned this a little bit on my live stream today. Some people said maybe I need to clean out the carburetor and stuff like that. You know what? Uh, I'm not really into engines that much, so, you know, I'll, I'll probably bring it to someone to work on and I'll let them figure it out, but no lawnmower yet. Guess who's taking the window seat and nibbles up on her usual perch. So we're basically back to where we were at the end of the last video. I've got these posters still that need to go on the wall. I've got one layer of them up here, but I got a lot of room to go down about two or three feet out down the wall from the previous posters so we're going to try and get as many of those into this space as possible and then i also have this section over here and i haven't done anything over here yet so uh, we may actually get to pull some more uh, posters out of the collection uh, beyond the ones i have here and get those in this section so i'm going to begin with that and we'll catch up with it in a minute okay i've spent a few hours on here and i think i got pretty much everything else on the wall Turns out there were one or two posters I didn't quite have room for, uh, but other than that, all the rest of them are posted. So I think it turned out pretty good. Yeah, this is a kind of a fun photograph I got from the photographer. Uh, it's just a, can you imagine being that guy? Yeah, remember what I said about guided by voices and beer. And that's kind of a cool poster. I showed you these on the ground, so probably not gonna touch on them too much but this is where we kind of put them so this is uh that propeller album i told you about i showed you showed you those a while back uh when i was still in the apartment the reason i chose to display this one is because a few years ago the record label that released the original propeller re-released the album and they actually decided that rather than using the album release cover that they were going to pick a few of these covers and you know that were owned by people and reproduce those on the uh the cover art for the cd now the way the cover art was designed there were actually what six or eight different of the covers that were included and this was one of them i actually was uh in pretty good touch with the person who uh ran the record label and uh, he had me scan this one for him and if you re if you purchased the re-release of the uh guided by voices propeller album uh in you know 10 years ago or whenever that was you could re you could fold the cover or the inlay card inside the booklet inside so that this was the cover that displayed so that's kind of why I uh, chose to display that one. And of course we got this one. I showed you this on the floor. And I think these were up before. And then this is kind of what I've done on this side. So these are kind of some fun posters too. Collectible items. Uh, Lenny and Squiggy. That's kind of cool. Getting a little bit of glare off of some of these. But that's kind of a trippy poster. Uh, the Isolation Drills promotional poster. Actually, I probably I think I have a copy of that that's autographed. I probably should hang that one. Yeah, it's probably in the same size frame, so we can probably do that at some point. Uh, this one, and then of course we got a couple of these that are you know this is a series for the same show. This was a two night show, and they just uh, released two different posters. Uh, each one of them with the uh, with the bands inverted, so. You know, you could pick which one you wanted was the important one here and uh, whoever was the headliner. 
and uh, so yeah that was that and of course I showed you this one uh, this one is the uh, poster from the electrifying conclusion that one kind of gave was given a place of honor in this in this house because that's an important one uh, not only is it a great poster but it's uh, you know one that I went to and of course you remember what I said the other day about uh, how beer imagery was always a big thing yeah here <laughs> what exactly is that monkey drinking yeah drinking a beer yeah, it's guided by voices. All right, now this is something you hadn't seen before, at least not seen clearly, but uh, this is a proclamation by the city of San Francisco declaring a particular day, in this case, April 3rd, 2001, guided by voices day in San Francisco. And it's signed by uh, uh, the mayor, Willie Brown, who was mayor at the time. And honestly, I wish I could tell you the whole story about this thing, but there's a very interesting story about this, and unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to share it with you. But, uh, you know, that's the way it goes. Now, I have decided in here uh, that it was probably a good idea to keep the, uh, the paper on the floor because I have decided now that I actually think I want to paint the, uh, the crown molding and the trim around the doors and the baseboards. And I think I'm going to do kind of a little tie-in to what I had in the house in California. For the most part, much of the common area of the house downstairs and upstairs was point, painted kind of a, a light blue color. Uh, but in the ceiling downstairs, I had a kind of a dark navy blue color that really looked cool. It had kind of a weird uh, figure eight and a bright yellow that was almost kind of the color of this vampire on Titus yellow. And then it was a dark navy blue uh, and the figure eight was in yellow and the, and the background was blue. And I thought it looked really good. It really popped. And I think it'll add a nice accent to this. So I'm going to go to Home Depot for two reasons. First off, um, we are still uh, collecting uh, paint swatches for the guest bathroom back here. So if you haven't sent one in, it's not too late. We're gonna go for at least another week on this. Uh, we kind of delayed the painting in here just because I got going out here and I wanted to get that done and, and you know, so, but we're still collecting swatches for this. So if you have ideas for what you want to do, it's still not too late. So send them to escapingthemouse at gmail.com. It's still, it's still not too late. Make sure when you photograph the paint chip that, the, uh, that all the text is clear because if I can't read the numbers, I can't collect the paint chip. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go down to Home Depot right now. I'm gonna try and figure out what that blue was. Uh, I'm gonna probably have to fake like what I did with the cat room here uh, and just find something close. But I bet you, you know, looking at paint chips, I can come pretty close. And it's even possible that when I see the name of the color, I'll recognize it. But I'm gonna go do, do that. And I have some new uh, submissions from people who want to, uh, you know, contribute colors to, to be considered. And so I'm gonna go and try and find some more paint chips today and then get that blue paint and hopefully we'll get uh, that done the next day or so. I just got back from Home Depot and from Lowe's and we found a lot of the colors today. So these are the colors, uh, the color uh, chips that I've found so far. I actually found this one too. This is a Vaspar paint and they didn't have a color chip, but he made me up just a little half pint jar of it. So these are the ones we're looking at. I mean, I also have these that I found the uh, that I found a couple weeks ago that were some of the first ones to come in. But these are the colors I'm considering right now. There were still a couple of them that I could not find. Uh, uh, so, you know, I'll try again next week. This, this contest is going to go on for a little while until we uh, get a fair number of colors. But uh, I do see some possible options here, so I think we're doing good. So, like I said, it's not too late to uh, to uh, send in your paint chip ideas if you still have them. Uh, right now, I can do Home Depot, I can do Lowe's, which is like Bear Brand Paint, Glidden Brand Paint, uh, Sherwin Williams, and uh, Vaspar, which are both at uh, Lowe's. So, if you've got you know a suggestion for this room, you know. It's still not too late to send it in. Send it to uh, escapingthemouse at gmail.com. And I'm probably going to go out next weekend, pick up any more paint chips that come in, and look for the couple that I haven't been able to find yet. And, uh, you know, maybe pick up any more that come in the next week, and we'll see what happens. So hopefully in the next week or two, we will uh, actually uh, 
whittle this down to about five choices and we will let you guys pick what the final choice is. So stay tuned. So anyway, I think that's all that I have for today. Thank you as always for watching and I will see you next time on Escaping the Mouse. Good night.